Memory. Hi, would you like to learn some useful idioms to talk about memory in English? Welcome to Jen Studio. My name is Jen and today I'm going to teach you 13 idioms connected to your memory and remembering things. Remember that an idiom is a set of words that come together in English to create a new unique meaning. For example, our first idiom for today is to take a trip down memory lane or sometimes the idiom might be said as to take a walk down memory lane or take a stroll down memory lane. What this means is that you are doing something which causes you to think back on happy memories. You are remembering good things that happened in the past. The other day I was looking through my high school yearbook and I went on a very long trip down memory lane. When I met my friend from elementary school the other day, we went on a trip down memory lane discussing all of the great things we remembered from our childhoods. Our second idiom for today is for something to slip your mind. If something slips your mind, it means that you forgot about it. You had the intention of remembering, but unfortunately, poof, it's gone. For example, the other day, it was my friend's birthday and I intended to wish her a happy birthday, but it slipped my mind. When I was grocery shopping, I wanted to get some eggs, but it slipped my mind and I forgot to get them. Idiom number three is to rack your brain. If you rack your brain, it means that you are thinking very deeply and very carefully trying to remember something or trying to find the answer to something. I misplaced my cell phone the other day and spent a long time racking my brain trying to remember where I might have put it. During the exam, he saw the question and realized that he knew the answer somewhere. He just needed to rack his brain some more to figure it out. Idiom number four is out of sight out of mind. Out of sight, out of mind means that if you don't see something for a while, then you will forget about that thing. For example, Sarah doesn't seem too sad that she broke up with her boyfriend. Out of sight, out of mind, I guess. I find it's very helpful to get rid of all the junk food in my apartment. Out of sight, out of mind. Then I won't be tempted to eat junk food if I don't see it. Idiom number five is to jog your memory. If you jog your memory, it means that something causes you to suddenly remember something that you have almost forgotten. For example, when the woman woke up, she had a huge headache and couldn't remember what she'd done the night before. Then when she saw the empty champagne bottle next to her bed, it jogged her memory. She'd been partying with her best friend. That song really jogged my memory and suddenly I could remember in vivid detail exactly where I was with my husband when we first heard it. Idiom number six is to ring a bell. If something rings a bell, it means that it sounds familiar to you. You vaguely remember it. You have a indistinct memory of this thing, but you don't quite remember exactly. For example, if someone asks you, hey, you remember Bob, don't you? Bob, Bob, his name rings a bell, right? So it means you kind of remember Bob, you think you know the name, but you can't quite put your finger on where Bob is from or why you know Bob. That rings a bell. This idiom is often used in a negative sense. If someone asks you about something but you don't remember at all, many people would say, mm, sorry, that doesn't ring a bell. It means I can't remember, I, I don't know, I don't have a memory of this. It doesn't ring a bell. Idiom number seven is for something to be on the tip of your tongue. On the tip of your tongue. What this means is that you almost remembered something, but then suddenly at the last minute you have forgotten it. For example, at a party, I wanted to introduce my husband to someone, but ah, that person, their name, ah, it's on the tip of my tongue. It's on the tip of my tongue. I can almost remember, but 
not quite. During a job interview, I had the perfect answer for questions prepared in my mind. And when the interviewer asked them, the answer was on the tip of my tongue, but I just couldn't get it out. Idiom number eight is for someone's mind to go blank. If your mind goes blank, it means that you can't think of the answer. You can't remember something no matter how hard you try. This often is used with tests or exams. You prepare really, really hard and you go into the test, you see the question and <gasps> Oh no, my mind went blank. I just can't remember. You rack your brain trying to find the answer, but your mind has gone blank. When the police took the victim in for questioning, she wanted to answer them, but her mind went blank and she just froze. Idiom number nine is to have a mind like a sieve. A mind like a sieve. This is a sieve. It's used for filtering things like flour to get all the bumps out. It has many, many holes in it. So if you say someone has a memory like a sieve, it means they have a very bad memory. Their memories and information can't stay in their head. They fall through the many, many holes that exist. So to have a memory like a sieve means you can't remember things very easily. If you have a friend who always forgets everything, they have a memory like a sieve. My uncle was a very wonderful but very forgetful person. He'd often lose his keys or forget people's birthdays. He had a memory like a sieve. Similar to having a memory like a sieve is idiom number 10, which is to have a memory like a goldfish. A memory like a goldfish. This idiom comes from the idea that goldfish have very short memories. They can't remember things for very long periods of time. So if someone has a memory like a goldfish, it means that they forget things very, very quickly. I have a friend who has a memory like a goldfish. They can never remember passwords for things. So they don't even put a password protection on their cell phone because they just forget it. They have a memory like a goldfish. Idiom number 11 is in one ear and out the other. In one ear and out the other. This means that someone can't remember something, but they can't remember because they weren't paying attention closely enough. They were maybe only half listening and sort of distracted by something. For example, if I need to tell my husband something and I want him to remember, I know I shouldn't tell him while he's watching baseball because whatever I say to him while he's watching baseball goes in one ear and out the other. The teacher clearly explained the answer to the class, but when she asked one of the students to respond to the question, he couldn't because the information had gone in one ear and out the other. Idiom number 12 is to bear something in mind or to keep something in mind. If you bear something in mind or keep something in mind, it means that you are carefully considering and remembering certain aspects of a situation before making a decision. For example, they are going to have a party and it's a dinner party, but you are a vegetarian. So you might say to the organizer, I'd love to come to your party, but please bear in mind that I don't eat meat. When deciding what to do at the amusement park, I need to keep in mind that my husband hates roller coasters. Idiom number 13 is to commit something to memory or to learn something by heart. If you learn something by heart or commit something to memory, it means that you work really hard to memorize it. You learn it very, very well so that you can use it in the future perfectly without making any mistakes. For example, when theaters finally reopen again, I will be acting in a play and I need to learn my lines by heart. 
When you are learning English, I'm sure there are many times when you need to commit new things to memory. You need to commit new grammar points and new vocabulary words to memory. If you'd like some helpful tips on the best way to learn new vocabulary, including tips that you can use for phrasal verbs and idioms and collocations, please check out a lesson I've made about that over here. So today, you have learned more than 13 idioms connected to memory. And now it's time for question of the day. Today's question is, have you ever forgotten something really important? And if so, what was it that you forgot and what happened? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this lesson. If you found it useful, don't let it slip your mind to subscribe to Jen's Jugyo. And please give this video a thumbs up. Good luck with your English studies. See you in the next lesson.